Now let us see what do you mean by the coil. Suppose you must have seen the coil, I think, because in our grinder, in our, in our mixer, at in many of the instruments, even in the radio, there is one coil. Okay, how this coil looks? Suppose if you take a very thin copper wire, okay, if you take a very thin copper wire and you go on winding that wire over this, and after that I remove the center rod, what will happen? You will see one coil like things, just like spring, that is called as the coil or that is called as the windings. Okay, now suppose if I make a big winding. like this. I will go on circling this. Okay. With a thin wire coil, with a thin copper wire, I make a coil. So, I will having, I will be having two ends to this because your coil or your uh, this wire has the two ends. So, two ends are there. If I attach these two ends to some power supply, okay, to some battery where the positive negative terminals are there. Okay. So this big coil is there in your hand. Now instead of just like in the last experiment we saw, but now instead of one center hole, I will make two holes, one hole here and one hole here. Okay. And through this, what I will do, I will pass the coil. Okay. Suppose this coil is passed like this and suppose these two ends two points I got and I connect these two points. Now if I complete this circuit, what will happen? From here, the current is flowing like this. Right? From this end, from this end, the current is flowing from here. It will flow through this coil. Now, again I sprinkle some iron filings there. What you will see? You will see two different groups of the iron filings. Two different groups of the iron filings. Some iron filings are there in between also, but maybe there the magnetic field is weak. Now these iron filings, this electromagnet is generated here and this electromagnet is generated here. Okay, now if you apply the thumb rule, okay, I am holding this, this conductor like this, but this conductor I have to hold like this. So here the direction of the forces is like this. And in this case, the direction of the forces is So here it is anti-clockwise and here it is clockwise. And you will see that these two ends, suppose this is end A and B. These two ends, these two ends will be opposite poles. Okay. This will be, suppose this is north, then this is south. So this is electromagnet. And whenever the current passing through a conductor, now in this case there is not a single wire is there. Here the, we have used the coil. So the idea is clear. With the help of the right hand thumb rule, we can show the direction of the magnetic field also. I have purposely shown these two because both are in the reverse directions. And that is why these two poles are different poles or reverse poles. Now making use of, you have to understand this magnetic lines of forces and magnetic field and how the in which direction the current is passing and what is the direction of the magnetic field because based on this we are going to see the different instruments in the chapter now you must have observed this or you will observe this that these are the concentric circles as this is the center point but this is the center point and this is the center point these ion filings take a proper circular path with the concentric circles those are crowded near to the center point and then go away as the magnetic field gets weaker and weaker. But you have to understand one thing. If you take a single loop, now suppose that 
loop is there okay this is a single loop now we put one cardboard here but that cardboard can be anywhere even this point can be there as an intersecting cardboard even this point can be there as an intersecting on cardboard so at every point at every point this magnetic field is generated with the concentric circles and what will happen it will add up and make a powerful magnet now magnetic field generated in the one wire only but if there is a coil what will happen when the coil is there the magnetic field is multiplied that means the first turn the magnetic field is there second turn third turn fourth turn with every wire at every point the magnetic field is generated right and what will happen it will simply add up so your magnetic field is directly proportional to the number of turns you take for that particular coil so what we have seen we have seen the direction with the right hand thumb rule then we have seen the number of coils the if n number of terms are there the magnetic field is directly proportional to it so the number of turns are increased the magnetic field will go on adding itself and it will be it will become more and more powerful now before going ahead let us see what do you mean by solenoid solenoid is nothing but a turns or the coil of the insulated copper wire okay that means if you take some rod and if you turn the if you take a copper wire and if you go on turning round this if this is the rod if you go on the copper wire turning round this and make it just like a spring that will be called as the solenoid now we have few magnetic materials okay we have iron we have steel now we can make permanent magnet how now just take that magnetic material and put it in the solenoid pass the heavy current through the solenoid what will happen the magnetism is induced in that particular material but then even though you turn off the current that magnetism will not vanish and that material will become permanent magnet this is how the permanent magnet is made now what material is used for making this permanent magnet let us see the material used permanent magnet is made by carbon steel chromium steel cobalt cobalt and tungsten steel and some alloys some alloys okay now out of those alloys one alloy is aldico and another alloy is nippermag as name suggests this is made by aluminum nickel and cobalt whereas this is nipper mag is made by iron nickel titanium and aluminum these two alloys are majorly used in the industry to make the permanent magnets now these permanent magnets are very important even in your ammeter in your voltmeter in your radio in your transistors in your tvs not uh, nowadays tvs solid state tvs old tvs in the speakers these permanent magnets are used okay then if we can produce the permanent magnet then what is the use of the electromagnet why we actually need the temporary magnetism that means as soon as whenever the current is passed the magnetism is produced as soon as the current is break or vanish the magnetism vanishes why we need this i will tell you one practical use of electromagnet you must have seen the junkyard okay so much scraps so much iron scrap is there now suppose they want to move the scrap from one place to another place the scrap is huge huge amount of scrap in tons are there 
how they will carry of course they can manually uh, take from one place to another place what other thing they can do they can take a big rod or big disc of magnetic material they will make it as a electromagnet temporary magnet from one place whenever it is on the scrap they will start the current magnetism is produced all the iron material all the magnetic material will be attracted towards it okay current is still on it will taken from one place to another by with the help of crane at this place the current is off and magnetism is vanished so all material will drop down what will happen if instead of electromagnetic electromagnet the permanent magnet is there if the permanent magnet is produced once the iron foilings are attracted at this place they will not drop at all right so at this place to move the material from one place to another place we need a electromagnet not permanent magnet now let us see the different properties and some more uses of electromagnetism and electromagnets thank you